And welcome to High School Physics Explained and welcome to my next video in the series, How Well Do You Know? And today we'll be discussing the photoelectric effect. And as with all these questions, it's worth pausing the video after reading each question, trying the question and seeing if your answer agrees with mine. The graph shows the intensity wavelength relationship of electromagnetic radiation emitted from a black body cavity. In 1900, Planck proposed a mathematical formula that predicted an intensity wavelength relationship consistent with experimental data. And the success of this formula depended on which of the following hypotheses. Is it A, the intensity of light is dependent on the wavelength? Is it B, that light is quantized with energy of light quanta depending on frequency? Is it C, light is a wave whose intensity is readily expressed using a mathematical formula? And D, light is quantized with the energy of the light quanta depending on the size of the cavity from which it is emitted. So, the first thing to understand with this particular question is that Max Planck had a conundrum. And that was basically the fact that the formulas uh, of how light behaved and how the intensity behaved was based on the Jean, Jean Rayleigh formula or Jean Rayleigh law. And that says that basically as the wavelength decreased, that the intensity increases by a factor of a power of four and also that the maximum value uh, moves uh, continually towards the left. So this graph would actually go up like so. But of course, that is not what we experience. And so what he did was remodify the formula and treat energy that in a way that it was quantized. That is, it came in little bits. I like to liken it to think of that when we have a slope, that if we treat the slope as smooth, that's continuous. But if you looked at, at, at a microscopic level and found that the slope was actually a staircase with very set and discrete amounts going up to it, then what you would have is actually that the slope is actually quantized with the actual steps being really small. Now that's an oversimplification, but basically that's what Max Planck did. He treated energy like a particle. So his hypothesis that the intensity of light is dependent on the wavelength. Well, that is true, but that is not based on, we already understood that there was already a relationship that the intensity was related to the wavelength. So nothing new under the sun here. So A is incorrect. That light is quantized with the energy of the light quanta depending on the frequency. Well, that introduces us to Max Planck's famous formula E equals HF. And so that is actually the correct answer. But let's have a look at C and D and see why they are incorrect. C says light is a wave whose intensity is readily expressed using a mathematical formula. Again, that was already established with Jean Rayleigh's law. And so that is not the hypothesis that he had. So therefore C is incorrect. Finally, that light is quantized, good so far, with the energy of the light quanta depending on the size of the cavity from which it's emitted. In fact, that had nothing to do with it. And so therefore D is incorrect. And again, as I said, B is the answer. When light of a specific frequency strikes a metal surface, photoelectrons are emitted. If the light intensity is increased, but the frequency remains the same, which row of the table is correct? Okay, I hope you have had a chance to look at the answers. And the important fundamental concept of the photoelectric effect is, is that if we have a surface and we have certain photons of light hitting the surface, then the numbers of photons will determine the numbers of electrons emitted. And because the numbers of electrons gives us the current, the numbers of photons gives us a relationship to the current that flows. But the number of photons is all about intensity. And so the intensity will affect the actual current. But the fact that we only have one photon responsible for emitting one electron, the amount of energy that this electron has is dependent on the energy of this photon. And this energy of the photon is equal to HF. And so if this energy is less than the minimum required for this photoelectron to be released, the photoelectron won't be released. If it is greater, 
then there'll be some energy left over for its kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is related to the frequency of these photons. So with that in mind, the number of photons, the number of photoelectrons emitted, now remember the intensity is increased. So therefore the number of photons emitted is also increased. So therefore C and D are correct and A and B are automatically excluded. Now, the frequency remains the same. So if they are released, then the frequency being constant, there'll be no change in the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. And so that remains the same and it does not increase. As you can see, C is our answer. Blue light is found to cause the photoelectric emission from a sodium surface, but not from a platinum surface. Which of the following best accounts for this difference? Is it A, the platinum does not absorb photons? Is it B, platinum has more electrons than sodium? Is it C, more energy is needed to remove an electron from a platinum surface? And D, the intensity of the blue light is not high enough to remove electrons from the platinum, from the platinum surface. Well, this is all about the photoelectric effect. And so let's have a look at the responses. First of all, platinum does not absorb photons. Well, it can absorb photons if the frequency is right. So therefore, A is incorrect. B, platinum has more electrons than sodium. Well, that is true from a, an atomic structure basis, but it has no bearing on this discussion. So B is incorrect. More energy is needed to remove an electron from the platinum surface. Well, that is true. The energy that any photoelectron has, the kinetic energy, is equal to the energy that the photon has minus the minimum required to release that electron from that surface. That's called the work function, and it varies from surface to surface. For example, platinum may have a high work function that is greater than the photon that arrives, so therefore the electron will not get the kinetic energy that it needs, it won't leave. So C is correct. Let's have a look at D, and I always encourage my students to look at the wrong responses and determine why they are wrong to help deepen their understanding. So the intensity of blue light is not high enough to remove the electrons from the platinum surface. Now, the fact is this is talking about the intensity of the blue light. The intensity is the number of photons arriving, and it is not going to make a iota of difference in whether the electrons are going to be moved. So BD is incorrect. All right, the next looks like a calculation type question, but it actually is quite easy to work out without a calculator. So the minimum amount of energy needed to eject an electron from a clean aluminium surface is 6.72 by 10 to the negative 19 joules. What is the maximum wavelength of incident light that can be shown on this aluminium surface in order to eject the electrons? Hopefully you've had a chance to try this question. So let's have a look at it. Well, the thing to remember, of course, is that E equals HF. So that's the first formula you need to know. The second formula you need to know is that the speed of light, of course, is C, and that is equal to F lambda. And that's lambda is the one that we want. So what we can now do is we can basically rearrange this and of course here we can see that frequency is equal to c over lambda and if we substitute that over in here we get e is equal to h multiplied by c over lambda that means lambda is equal to h multiplied by c over the energy now, if we now substitute in all our values, you first of all have h, which is Planck's constant, and that is 6.626 by 10 to the power of negative 34. The next value is c, which is 3 by 10 to the power of 8. And then finally, what we have is e, which is in our case 6.72 by 10 to the power of negative 19. Now, you can see that all the answers are wildly different. So all we need to do is look not at the numbers, but at the order of magnitude. So the order of magnitude for this value is negative 33. So you look at the power and the 6.6 raise it up to one higher. Then the next order of magnitude is eight and we add those order of magnitudes together and we get eight. 
Then you've got dividing by an order of magnitude here. We've got an order of magnitude of negative 18, but you're dividing. So you're actually subtracting the negative 18, which of course is adding 18. So negative 33 plus 8 is negative 25. Negative 25 plus 18 gives us an approximate value or order of magnitude of negative 7. Now, with that in mind, you can see the only possible answer that is anywhere near that ballpark figure is B. And so therefore, our answer is B. Go ahead, use your calculator, substitute it all in, but I can guarantee you the answer will be 2.96 by 10 to the negative 7 meters. When photons with energy E strike a metal surface, electrons may be emitted. The maximum kinetic energy E K of the electrons is given by EK equals E minus W, where W is the constant for the metal. Which of the following graphs shows the relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of these electrons and the wavelength of the photons. Important you understand this, it's the wavelength of the photons. All right, if you know this formula, you can clearly see that this formula here is a linear function. And so if I were to graph E, with this E over here, then what we would get, we would get a line that looks like this. That is, this E over here is actually equal to HF, and this H is constant. But this shows you the relationship, therefore, between E and frequency, and we have a positive relationship. But of course, the fact is that as we move across, we have an increasing frequency and an increasing kinetic energy. But increasing the frequency means decreasing the wavelength. And so if I were to put wavelength down here and EK, then I would get an inverse relationship because the fact is, is that there is an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency due to the fact, of course, that C is equal to F lambda. And since this is constant, you can see we have an inverse relationship going on here. As a result, B is my answer. A student carried an experiment during which light of different frequencies was shone onto a metal surface to produce photoelectrons. The student measured the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons as the frequency of light was altered. And the relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons and the frequency of the light incident on the metal surface was given by this formula, where E is the maximum kinetic energy, F is frequency, H is Planck's constant, and phi is the constant depending on the metal used. How could the student best analyze the data to determine the value for Planck's constant? This is actually less about the photoelectric effect and actually more about the skills of examining relationships in graphical format. So how would you analyze the data? Well, draw a graph. If you are changing the frequency and therefore measuring the mechanic energy, you would automatically draw a graph where your independent variable is frequency and your dependent variable is our kinetic energy. Now, if this is true, then the slope of this line would be equal to h. And negative phi would be your y-intercept over here, which gives you your work function. And in fact, different metals will have different work functions and will have different lines. So as a result, what have we done? We've plotted EK against F and found the line of best fit. Okay, and that therefore is the answer what we want. When the electromagnetic radiation shines in metals, photoelectrons may be emitted. The maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons is plotted against the radiation frequency of four metals as shown in the graph. The electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 187 nanometers shines upon an unknown metal and the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is found to be 2.5 electron volts. Based on this information, what is the unknown metal? Is it aluminium, beryllium, calcium or ion? All right, the first thing to understand is the fact that we have the wavelength of 187 nanometers. Now, 187 nanometers, we need to convert into a frequency. So what we have, of course, is C equals F lambda. And therefore, the frequency is equal to C divided by lambda. 
c of course is 3 by 10 to the power of 8 and lambda in our case is 187 nanometers and so what we get is 187 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Well that is going to give us a value of 1.6 by 10 to the power of 15 hertz. So now we've established the frequency and the frequency of course is 1.6. Now, if the frequency is 1.6, we're told that the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is 2.5 electron volts. So here now we're going up the scale here, we've got 2.5. And so if we now put those two together, you can see my value is going to cross for the metal along this line. This line, of course, is aluminium. Now, it says, in this case, it's A, and there goes that. that's our answer. The graph shows a maximum kinetic energy with the photoelectrons are emitted as a function of frequency for two different metals X and Y. The metals are illuminated with a light of wavelength 450 nanometers. What will be the effect of doubling the intensity of this light without changing the wavelength? Okay, so we've got for metal X, the number of photoelectrons emitted would not change, but the maximum kinetic energy would increase. For X, the number of photoelectrons emitted would increase, but the maximum kinetic energy would remain unchanged. For both X and Y, the number of photoelectrons emitted would not change, but the maximum kinetic energy would increase. And lastly, for both metals X and Y, the number of photoelectrons emitted would increase, but the maximum kinetic energy would remain unchanged. Now, before you dive into this question, it's important to look at the question carefully. The first of all is that the graph here is in terms of energy versus frequency, but we are given a wavelength. The fact that we're given a wavelength, it is very prudent to determine what the frequency is of that wavelength. And so, of course, C is equal to F lambda, and therefore F is equal to C over lambda. And as a result, you're going to get 3 by 10 to the power of 8 over 450 by 10 to the power of negative 9, that's the nano, and you're going to get 6.6 .6 by 10 to the power of 14. Hertz. Now, looking at our graph, that means we are looking at a frequency that is approximately at this point here. It says now we are doubling the intensity of the light. Well, what's going to happen when we double the intensity of the light? Well, first of all, we need to understand that because we're at this frequency here, we already have some energy for X. But because this is below the threshold frequency for Y, in this case, we're not going to get any electrons or any photoelectrons emitted from Y at this frequency. So any changes in terms of the intensity will only affect X. Y will remain unchanged because in order to change Y, we actually have to increase the frequency and therefore decrease the wavelength. And since the question says we're not changing the wavelength, we're not affecting Y. What happens, of course, if we increase the intensity of light? Well, that will only mean more electrons being emitted or more photons, electrons being emitted. And so as a result, but no change in kinetic energy. And so the only possible answer is B. X, the number of photoelectrons emitted would increase. That's true more photons, more photoelectrons, but the kinetic energy does not change. A is incorrect because it talks about kinetic energy changing and that can only occur if we change the wavelength. X and Y, well, I told you Y is not allowed to actually have any change because it actually isn't emitting any photoelectrons at all. B is our answer. I hope that has given you a greater understanding of the photoelectric effect with these series of questions. Please like down below, share uh, with your peers, and if you want more of my videos, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.